Start streaming. All right, we're gonna see if this stream gets live any better, anywhere. Come on, YouTube, you can do it. All right, that looks like it's gonna work. All right. Um, okay, so I just got back in from Hell Weekend. <laughs> um, uh, trying to go camping that was a total total nightmare and there's a couple of jobs that I need to do uh, rush so we're gonna take care of those this one I thought was interesting so I thought I would do a, a stream this is an iPhone 7 plus and it's got one of these uh, backlight mods it's pretty cool it flashes lots of different colors and it came in as no backlight so the guy wanted a backlight solution I don't see a lot of just straight up no backlight on the iPhone 7 or iPhone 7 Plus. So usually if it's no backlight, it means bad screen. So that's what I was thinking we were in for here. But let's look and see what we found when I looked under the hood. And I worked on this a little bit and I thought it was interesting. So I figured I would share along with you guys. All right, so let me get this screen off here. All right, so I took off the screen and disconnected the battery. <clears throat> you're up. Yes, you're live. Yes. What ended up being wrong with that Ford? Well, um, I don't know. So the deal with, with uh, this weekend, I um, have a couple of friends that are planners. I'm not a planner, but the planner friends planned a Memorial Day camping trip. So they booked a site down at... Hickory Hill Campground, which is about an hour south of here. So I, you know, fired up the good old Ford 2006 Ford F-250 Super Duty Crew Cab truck that that I almost never drive. And it really just kind of uh, is there to haul trash up the driveway once a week. And whenever I go camping, which is about once a year, to haul the big ass RV. So I have a big ass fifth wheel that we've had for years. Um, I don't, I can't see my my alerts, but I, I hear, a, I hear a, a Twitch alert. Oh, here we go. Mark Wilson sent me two bucks to help me fix my Ford. <laughs> so uh, I was driving, I, I went to the, to the RV place. This fucking hobby is way too expensive. I go to the RV place, I gotta pay them 500 bucks to get the RV out of Hawk, which is storage and, and the bullshit that they said was wrong with it, which was um, you have some dry cracks that might lead to leaks, all right? Fix, fix whatever, I just want it to, to work because I'm going by myself with four kids. And so I, I go, I, I hate that place because, you know, this is, this is totally, totally sexist but when a woman by herself with four kids running around comes to pick up a big ass rv and to hitch it up to her her clearly piece of shit truck go just make sure everything's okay and instead of just be like yeah see you have a nice trip now, all the other all the other places they they come out and they just kind of make sure everything's going well so i go out to the rv and of course it has a stone dead battery which is a little odd because i just paid them 500 bucks to have it ready to go for summer and i i can't put it on the hitch with a dead battery because it needs to like lower the jacks with the battery so i've walked that road before and and had to had to face having a dead battery at the same place when I went to pick it up about a year ago. And I, I um, at the time, nothing, it was like late Sunday, nothing was open except for a Dollar General. So this is how dumb I was. I went over to the Dollar General to think, how could I jumpstart the, the battery just enough to get it to lower the jacks? So. I wanted to buy jumper cables to jump it to the truck battery. But they didn't have jumper cables at Dollar General. What? So I bought a ex household extension cord and tried to like strip this extension cord and hold it together 
and turn the truck around to just charge the battery up enough. And that was a really bad idea. It doesn't work. Don't try that. So I ended up having to drive and go buy a new battery. But this time they were there. So I marched back in there going, dudes, the battery's dead. Help me out, bro. So they wheel out their, their little battery jump starter, jump start the battery enough so that I can drop the fucking trailer on the, on the hitch. So I leave and figure the thing will just pull truck power on the way and it will charge up the battery enough and it'll be fine. So I start heading down the road and I go to Walmart, of course, with a big ass 40 foot RV and park like way in the back where I don't have to turn around, trot all these kids in there. Groceries for a, tr a weekend trip is crazy expensive when you're like, well, there's nothing in there. So you have to buy ketchup and mustard and everything it was ridiculous. So I finally get underway and we get to about 15 miles out from this campground where all our friends are, all the planners have already set up. They're there on time. And I noticed that the truck has some white smoke coming out and I'm just, you know, let's just get these last 15 miles done. You can do it, bro and then the highway went to a construction zone so it's an interstate that now one side is closed so both sides of the interstate are on one side there's a single lane southbound single lane northbound all of these construction cones and i'm driving down a hill when the the thing starts saying check gauges well i do check the gauge with my eye and it's on red so the oil pressure gauge is is off the charts so, you know, I'd like to pull over, but you can't because it's all Jersey wall. And if I were to stop on this highway, I would I would be a, a, a blood clot in the carotid artery that is 390 South. So I ended up uh, looking for a place to pull over, didn't see anything. And that's when the, the truck just stopped, just the engine just cut off like it would as if you pulled the key out. So I'm now have no power steering, no brakes with four kids in the car plowing down the road and that was really terrifying so i ended up you know being able to use manual steering and manual brakes to finally there was a brake and you could pull over onto the grass with the the ass of the rv still in the lane with these big ass trucks plowing by so that was really terrifying and in the end i had to you know, make friends with some tow guys who who came in in a spectacularly horrifying show, towed the truck and the RV up the up the road to their to their shop. So then the kids got the to make the fun camping memory of seeing what a real junkyard is like. And look at all these crashed up cars. And it's like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And the they kind of took the truck off and then they had the RV and they're like, well, what are you gonna do with these people? So I was like, why don't you just drive the RV to the campground, plop it there and I'll deal with this later. All right, so the tow truck guys take the RV to the campsite, plop it in the spot. And I think finally this nightmare is over, it's midnight. So they hook to its truck power, drop the jacks but I have to operate the slide out so that you can actually go in the thing and it's not like a crunched up sardine can. So they leave, thanks guys. And I go to operate the slides, the battery's completely dead. I'm plugged into shore power now. No power, no power to the battery. Great. So in the end, I had the existing old, also pretty much dead battery and some jumper cables that I got it to at least open up the slides and that was just a nightmare. And, and then after that, uh, I, had, I uh, had some guys bring down the good old iPad Rehab DC power supply and multimeter. So I figured out that the AC converter in the RV was not working. Thanks, Myers RV in Caledonia, one star review, for noticing that it, while, while you were busy patching leaks that didn't really that weren't really leaks and i was able to manually force charge the battery and keep it consuming enough current with the amount of current that it was using kind of titrating the dc power supply to make it so that i could finally camp and by camp i mean let the kids watch zootopia inside the camper while it rained outside so i just got back from that fun weekend and uh, yeah, and so here, here's the thing. 
wonder how hard Lewis has been laughing about this terrifying. You know what's funny about Lewis and this terrifying story? I sent him a message from when I thought I was going to die. So this is this is pulled over on the side of the road where traffic is is whizzing by. I think the chance that that I will not survive this is high. So I send him a message that says something like pretty sure I'm going to die. Nice knowing you. You know, you you were a good friend. And then and then na just now I was like watching his stream from that night where he's like, "Oh, well, Jess is messaging me. She doesn't realize that I'm ignoring her." Ho 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 ho. What an asshole. But Speaking of Lewis, he did, over this same weekend, lose a bet with me, which we are not going to discuss, but he is going to uh, get a chance to read to you guys the more fascinating womanhood, so look for that sometime this week. So that'll be pretty funny. But yeah, the, the, so the F250 uh, 2006 turbo diesel engine apparently was the First year that Ford did that, I know nothing about diesel engines or trucks or any of that shit. But what I've learned is that pretty much everybody knows, and by everybody, I don't mean mechanics or even guys that sell trucks. I mean everybody, like all the dudes at the campground, like your granddad, like the, the barber, like everybody except for Jessa knows that the 2006 Ford F-250 diesel engine is basically a 2011 MacBook GPU. Uh, so that sucks. So right now that truck is in the junkyard waiting for them to, you know, see what they can do. And, uh, and I'm probably gonna have to buy a new truck, which sucks. All right, so, so all right, let's see. Let's see if you guys, so I need some truck recommendations because I gotta buy a truck like, you know, probably tomorrow because the camper is still abandoned at the at the uh at the campground no work today holiday eh, kind of all right uh what's up gabe i'm on time happy memorial day they did the apple led mod yes on this we'll, we'll look at that in just a second i just want to get caught up uh did you see the news about touch id in the new iphone 8 not really uh, gutting iPhone 7s already? Yes. Um, isn't iPhone 8 with Touch ID in the power button? Nobody knows. We don't have any iPhone 8s in our hands. Looks like you'll need to teach yourself mechanics as well. I guess so. Ford power strokes are tricky. Yes. Uh, let's see. Is yours a 7.3? The 6.4 is a complete piece of shit. You should look up power stroke up. Here's what I do. What, if you don't know something, then what you do is you find somebody who does know something. So I went down, this is you know, a long time. I've, I've stopped going to the guys that don't know anything about diesel engines, and I found the diesel engine whisperer. So the local guy that's the, the diesel engine, uh, you know, Jessa of iPhone repair. And that guy is, is telling me, the way he talks to me about this truck is the same way that I would talk to a customer with, about a rabbit hole. And the problem with this, you know, is this is <laughs> this, the reason why it's complex, blah, 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 blah. So he was very, very knowledgeable and, and pretty much told me this is, this is going to never really, he could do a shit ton of work, which he did, and not really guarantee that, that the, the problem wouldn't come back. So this has already been in for engine repair um, at least twice to the tune of like 2,500 bucks each time. And he's, and he's just telling me like, I'm basically just reflowing the GPU. So we're gonna, we're gonna get out of that. You can buy portable battery packs like you can get for tablets or phones that will jumpstart vehicle. Yes, I am aware of that and I have one in the garage. Uh, I didn't think I would need it picking it up from the RV professionals who had just charged me 500 bucks to make it ready for summer. I would have thought they would have picked up on something like, you know, the battery doesn't charge. Uh, there we go, camping, how cool. Hopefully the kids had fun. They absolutely had fun. You know what the biggest hit of the entire weekend was? My friend Adrian went down to Five Below, which is a dollar store, and she got the cool cornstarch in pantyhose set that you use to beat your friends up, and it, it was a, a huge blast for all the kids, so that was definitely fun. Um, yeah, this, yeah, my Ford only has 100,000 miles on it. Let's see. 
Uh, that's unfortunate. To work on a van, they usually have to lift the chassis off the frame. Yeah, it's a big pain in the ass. Um, oh, I don't have any idea. What, all I, here's what I know. I know that the, the truck stopped running uh, in the middle of the road. Let's don't, ah, no, don't, don't download load up. iTunes. There's Chris Long. White smoke, not good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just had all this kind of sputtering and just loss of power and blah, blah, blah. Uh, overheating is usually the EGR cooler. Mm, who knows? Uh, manual steering, no power brakes. Sounds like my Datsun. Yes. <laughs> but when you have manual steering and no power brakes and a 13,000 pound trailer on your ass that, and you're on a highway, uh, that is going downhill and there it's an interstate that's in a construction zone then it's really fucking scary is there a contact place where I can ask a few questions to diagnosticate a problem with my iPhone yes you can go to the forum at Rossman repair forum and he would love you to sign up and ask all the iPhone questions that you want all right diesel yes most important thing on a power stroke is the coolant cap. I mean, literally the last time this truck went to the diesel whisperer was maybe three months ago. Since then, I have driven it from the driveway, from my house to the end of the driveway and back maybe four times. And Mark, when he's here, he drives the truck to and from the shop to the house, which is maybe five miles. And he, he does that maybe uh, every day for a week or two and then this trip and it blew up so there we go um there we go you need a Winnebago yes all right so many things to go wrong yes all right how many mechanics in this chat I don't know I'm waiting for the mechanics to just say yeah you know fuck that piece of shit Jessa if you need to tow a 13,000 pound trailer, you should buy, insert, insert awesome truck here that doesn't break down. That's what I was doing around the campground, talking to all the, all, all the, the bros with fifth wheels going, who doesn't hate their truck? All right, so, they, so then I went and talked to the, to the Ram, uh, 2500 20, Ram today guy. Uh, let's see. All right, more mechanic talk. Lewis definitely won't help. Yes, all he, all his, his help is you need to sell that thing. What's wrong with you? All right. Are solid with the exception of the EGR cooler. Don't listen to those that say it's a crap engine. They have some issues. I don't want anything with any issues. Uh, let's see. You can lose it on tax. Mark probably trashed it doing donuts with it those nights he bought it. Well, Mark did take the truck and crash it into the minivan, and that same exact day, I got pulled over because the minivan doesn't have a tail light now, thanks to Mark Schaefer. So let's see. 7.3 bulletproofed power stroke. I did learn about the bulletproofing, which sounds a little weird. Like, hey, we've got a perfectly great Ford you can buy. Uh, it's going to work great, but if you really want it to work great, you can pay us more for something called bulletproofing, which means that's, uh, just make them all bulletproof. That's silly. All right. Never buy a truck new. Fuck that. I'm only buying things new from now on. The, the, the minivan I bought new and that was after the, the used town and country that I had literally f fell apart and I got stuck on a vacation, had to buy a car, sucked. All right fix it nope all right let, I'm trying to apparently you use a lot of bad words yes best truck on the market right now is probably a GMC or Chevy with a 6.6 .6 liter fix the truck nope I am not fixing that truck fuck that yesterday someday iPhone 8 will have ID scanner built into the screen and not be replaceable well, that's what people have been saying for a long time maybe it's true maybe it's not uh, if it's true, then you're going to see every single cell phone repair shop show up to lobby the, um, for the right to repair. All right. Those mechanics are playing wrong. Uh, all right. 
I'm glad it wasn't the board repair school bus. Right, well that's what the new truck is gonna be. It's gonna be the, the board repair school bus. Uh, let's see. Dying in the middle of the road. Sounds like my CJ7 more than once in major thoroughfares. Fun. Mm -hmm. So many Ford jokes. Mark fucked it. Always let diesels warm up. Oh, I got that. We got the little like coil preheater thing. Ram second generation cat is usually what I see my diesel friends slobber over. Get to the seven plus, yeah. Uh, getting sleepy. Then you should probably go to sleep, Cody, because this is probably gonna be a while. If you want a great engine, but an overall crappy truck, get a Ram. Sounds great, that's totally what I want. If you want an overall good truck that can pull tons of weight, get a GMC or Chevy. Uh, I just want something, I just want this problem solved. Mm-hmm. What happened on this stream? Jess is getting ready to look at a long screw damage iPhone 7 Plus. All right, something else, something else. Are, are we at the end of this? Yay, okay. All right, so now let's look at this phone. Let's take a look under the microscope. Okay, so what's the deal? Here's the cool backlight mod. So I worked on this a little bit already, but and that's why I decided to start a stream. So this thing's cool. This is the, the this whole piece is the backlight mod. And here's the the backlight. So now that blinks like lots of different colors when it is hooked up. Pretty cool. How it connects to the battery is absolutely hysterical. No soldering, of course. So this is the mod. And the mod like clips into the battery. Isn't that cool? And then you can just kind of connect the battery right on top of that. So that's all fine. And then if you look around here at the connectors, you know, I don't see any obvious backlight filter damage, that sort of thing. But I did see a big ass hole in the board where there used to be a screw bracket. Screw bracket is gone and chunks of the board were gone. So I started digging around in here and that's what led me to this video, which is going to be a long screw damage. So you can see this piece here that has, maybe, maybe you can't quite see it. Let me try to make the camera match what I'm seeing. There we go. That's a little bit better. Still, still pretty off from what I'm looking at. All right. So this is a piece of the board that used to live here. Used to live right here. And you can see it's all fractured and dug up. And if we look at that, we can see that there's some ground plane and then there's some, looks like one, two, three little traces that are completely severed on both ends. So that little piece is just a chunk that came off. All right, let's try to clean this up a little bit so that you guys can see what this area looks like. And we'll go ahead and disconnect this connector. Let's get that out of the way. So the mod didn't kill the phone. Not in this case. The mod is okay. I guess it doesn't really let you do much with that connector there. The trying to get, I'm guessing it was the trying to get that battery connector thing to sit right and that probably lifted it up a little bit high. So I'm not sure how common this is gonna be, but if you do crank into the iPhone 7 Plus, you can destroy the traces that live under the screw hole. All right, so let's see if we can see this now. All right, so this, let's see if we can get oriented here. All right, so there appears to be there appears to be a pretty a pretty big one here. Not you. All right, so this one here that's kind of fat. Let's make it so that we can really see that. Let me see if I can turn up my light. Let's see if we can do that and make it brighter. There we go. 
Okay. So under here, there is a pretty fat trace here that is appears to be intact. And then there is a tiny little thin trace that was broken. And it's the number two one here. So you can see the top end of it. No, you can't because my camera does not match what, what, the, what the microscope is looking at. So up here, you can see this tiny little trace. And then there's one right next to it. And this is the one that I have, that I have, uh, that I've fixed. So I've kind of put a little temporary jumper on here just to see if that healed the problem. And then this first one goes down and connects to this guy. And then the second one connects right here. All right, so as it is right now, the first jumper is done, but it's a pretty shitty jumper. And the second jumper is not done, and the third one seems to be intact. So let's look at that again. So there's the, out, the, the one that's closest to the center of the board here to down there. And then there's this second one here to here that's also skinny, and then there's a big fat third one. All right, so let's need to irrigate that wound and use suction to get rid of the debris. All right, so before we like really kind of get, get into that, let's see how would we go about figuring out whether, you know, what, what's important here. So I don't want to spend a lot of time repairing a jumper for something that is some tiny little function that nobody really cares about, that, that is going to be like a debugging TriStar or something like that then it doesn't really make sense, then who cares if it's not something that you actually need. So it would be nice to know what is the consequence of each of these. And before even doing the any, any trace repair on this at all, what is the likelihood that any of this is really related to the problem, which is backlight? So the backlight problem might just be bad screen after messing around with this mod, who knows? So let's go on a hunt and see if we can figure out what these traces do. So in the old days, you had to get a bare board and scratch down to the traces, put a multimeter on the trace, and then probe around the board until you got a beep. And the guys over in China at ZXW have um, already, already largely done this. So let's go see what they have figured out. So we'll open up ZXW. And ZXW has a handy thing called seven plus screw holes break, which means that somebody has seen this problem before. So here they have found for us and mapped this out already, the little screw holes in our exact spot. So here we go. And there we have it. Fat guy that in our case is still intact. And then the first skinny one and the second skinny one. So this is the one that I already repaired. So let's look at this one first. So let's try to figure out how can we guess what this guy does. So let's see what we can learn from ZXW by itself. So ZXW is telling us that this little trace talks to this ball right here. So this ball is in, it looks like it's the CPU, which we're just guessing on that CPU. And it looks like it is in the second row from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so 15. So now there, that's pretty much all the information we can get out of the ZXW section called screw holes break. So let's go to the iPhone 7 Plus board view and see if we can figure out what is that mapped to. So the 7 Plus board view doesn't have anything about screw hole breaks, but it does have the CPU. So we can kind of find the same guy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I think that's it. Maybe. Mm, maybe I'm wrong. Let's see if we can find anything over here that that is connecting to. I'm not sure, 100% sure I got that right. I'm old. I can't see all the way up across uh, this projector. All right, let's click that again and let's just use a pattern to find this. All right, so there's this little spot where there are two little guys coming down. 
So we are in the long row number three. So let's do that. Let's go back seven plus and see if we got the right dot. All right, so CPU has these two little spots and we are in the long row and we are going to that one. All right, so hey, it's giving us a name of this line. AP to LCM reset. Hmm, AP to LCM reset. Didn't we just work on that? The AP to LCM reset line is the exact same dude that we were just doing a video on in the iPhone 6S. So we can come over and see what we can find. So let's see what else is going on around here. All right, so from there, we can guess that this has a good chance of having something to do with display. All right. Is that the right dude? Yeah, I think that's the right dude, right? Let's just check one more time. Let's just check one more time. I don't know why I can't remember this stuff, probably from a harrowing weekend of fighting off death. Yeah, so it is in the row by CPU, second from the bottom. Seven. Oh, I see. There's two different versions of the seven plus. I don't have any idea which board I'm working on. We could we could look for the number, but let's just click the other one and see if it's the same. All right. So in this one, it would be this guy. It's interesting that this one does not have it labeled in any way. So what I would be looking for would be anything that's showing me that it goes to the LCD connector. All right, so that leads, that doesn't give us as much information as this board, board view does, which is, these have all little labels. This one's, this one's a lot, got a lot more information. Click it. AP to LCM reset L. AP to LCM reset L. I'm, I would expect that actually to go over here and show up at the LCD connector, and I'm not sure why it's not. Uh, it almost certainly has to go to the, LC, to the LCD connector. But in any event, that could be one reason. All right, if they base the ZXW files from the factory board files, they should have the full track layouts on all layers anyhow, and you can probably find them using the PC by B in the, in the pads viewer, uh, maybe. All right, so in any event, that what does that mean for us? That means that if we have placed the jumper that heals that line, that is probably really relevant for backlight. So let's just check that first. So I'm gonna stick this screen back on here. And last time I checked, that did solve backlight. But before we kind of move on, we gotta know what the hell do the other, do the other, does the other broken one do? All right, so I'm gonna kick this little mod out of the way. Forget about the mod for now. All right, so I put this back together and let's see if we get a backlight. And we do. So solving that one torn trace turned this phone from no backlight to backlight. So now that the backlight's on, we can actually investigate what is the deal with the other torn traces. All right, so let's go on a hunt and see what we can find about the other ones. Let's go back and see what is the consequence. Let's look at screw holes break and see what we can learn here. All right, let's get rid of chat. All right. Okay, so the other one that's torn is this guy. So who the hell is that guy? So from here, ZXW is telling us, well, it talks to some random component that's gonna be hard to find. And it talks to this chip whoever that is that seems to be near uh near this guy so we can look on let's look back here and see if we can identify that chip and let's see well, this guy's getting notifications up the wazoo 
All right, so this chip is U2404, and it tells us that uh, it tells us that this guy is SPI AOP to IMU SCLKR2. All right, so what do we make out of that? When you see IMU, that generally puts you in the neighborhood of things like uh, compass and and accelerometer and gyroscope and those dudes. So let's see if we can figure out a little bit more about U2404. So on the, if you go over to Blackfish, which is a great way to get schematics when you don't have schematics, you can say, hey Blackfish, do you have iPhone 7 Plus? And let's see if it does. Yeah, that's iPhone 7 Plus. All right, do you know, can I do a little control F for U, what was it, 2402? Yes, U2402 is a guy named Magnesium Compass. Yeah, oh, we're on 2404. 2404. All right, 2404. What the heck is 2404? Well, let's read the page. Accelerometer and gyroscope. And then compass is over there. All right, so accelerometer and gyroscope. I see the word accelerometer gyroscope around here. And same as over here. I see accelerometer gyroscope. All right, so which is our line? It's this one here. So pad two, SPI, AOP two, IMU, clock R2. So what does that mean? What do you think would be the consequence then of not having this line? You could just guess and say, uh, sounds like you, it, clock sounds pretty important for data communication uh, from one chip to another. So that's probably gonna be important to the function of either accelerometer or gyroscope, or maybe both of them. So let's do a test then. Let's see if this phone, which is booted up, let's see, what was this guy's passcode? Hmm. All right, so now we're into this phone. Let's see if this phone can recognize, let's just open up a website. What happens if I turn it sideways? Nothing. So it doesn't seem to be responsive. And I'll check to make sure that he hasn't um, turned off the orientation. So orientation lock is off, which means that it should switch the display and it doesn't. All right, so therefore we can guess that uh, this is going to be an important line for that function. And that is how you would do that. Now, what about that third line while we're here? Let's go ahead, even though in, the, in the, the, this case, the third line is intact, let's just kind of complete the story by taking a guess on what that third line would probably do. Blackfish, don't crash on me, please. All right. Um, yeah, we're working on seven plus trace damage from somebody installing a backlight mod and, and clearly ripped off a whole screw bracket, took out backlight, and we're investigating the three traces that are under there. One of them is intact, two of them were completely torn, and one, I've put a jumper already and brought back backlight, so let's look to see how important is it to fix the other one. And we found out that without the other one, he's not gonna have gyroscope accelerometer function. And before we move off of this, let's just look and see what the third function would be. So let's go back to ZXW and let's close that. So let's go, not Blackfish, ZXW. Let's go to screw holes break. Now you can do all of this without having, I mean, ZXW is not a required tool. There's nothing in ZXW that you can't figure out by yourself. It's just a, a handy little thing. All right, so then how about this one? So this one's gonna be a little bit more tough. So this is the one that's the fat trace and it is intact. Fat generally means m maybe power instead of data, like these two thin ones. So let's see if we can figure out where does it go. So it goes to some kind of a test point. We're never gonna be able to find that. And then let's look down here. 
and it looks like it goes to a chip that looks a heck of a lot like the footprint of TriStar and it's in the location of where TriStar is on the 6S so that probably is TriStar so it's the second dude here on TriStar so let's go back to this board view and see if we can get more details so let's hunt around for that same chip TriStar looking guy that was right around here all right so it's U4001 and it's this thing hey there we go PP TriStar underscore accessory 2 and now we can start to see patterns and put patterns together because we just did a big investigation to say what the hell is up with the TriStar accessory line so what do you think would be the consequence, especially you guys that watched the stream on what the heck does TriStar do, when we did an experiment to delete balls under TriStar and put it back on, we were specifically looking at the accessory line, the accessory power line. This is the same fault. This is the accessory power line on TriStar. So what do you predict if that line was broken? In this phone, it's not broken. But if it was, <coughs> what do you think would be the consequence? Let's see what chat has to say about that. All right. Blackfish, 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 try the compass. Uh, the trace is to the IMU, which stands for Inertial Measurement Unit, which is usually a nine axis, let's say a, a magnetron, <laughs> a magnetometer gyroscope accelerometer. How many mil is that trace? I don't know, less than, less than, uh, probably less than 0.1 all right it's just 10x harder it's it's a zillion times harder without a zillion times work faster all right no accessory support no headphone jack bro what no um video out to projector yes greg for the win greg is on the money greg greg is greg i remember getting getting something uh having something that was right on the money the last time the last time I did a did a did a stream yes so from that video we learned that if you delete the ball for accessory power out of TriStar then everything's fine charging's fine data transmission's fine cable still works in both directions still talks to the computer all of that is fine the only thing it can't do is power an accessory like a dongle so the one that I used to test is a little dongle for HDMI output, which normal phones can project through that dongle and show up as an HDMI input on the projector. So that's a really easy test. And phones that have no accessory voltage or have a problem with that line don't. So if that line was severed, we could guess that you're probably going to have an, a difficulty powering accessories. So when you're if you're ever facing this repair, then you can decide, you know, you can ask the customer, how big of a deal is that to you? I mean, how many of us really use accessories? I don't know, I guess for iPhone 7 Plus, if you want to have a headphone, then you probably need that line. So for the 7 and 7 Plus, it's probably more important than it is for the 5S. But there you go. All right, so that means we need to, we need to uh, look back up. Hey, Jessa, any way to retrofit a 3.5 millimeter jack to the iPhone 7? Mm, uh, no. Uh, I'm, I've never, never thought about that. I would think that that would be, you know, probably doable since it can be powered by the dongle, but who knows? Who knows? All right. That would be a kind of a fun project, but that will come when the iPhone 7 is an old cheap phone. I don't think anybody wants to mess with it um, on, they have too much value right now. So that means we do need to fix this second trace. So let's try to mess, let's see how painful it is to watch Jessa do trace repair, which I almost never do. Can't stand trace repair. I suck at trace repair. Mark does 90% of all of our trace repair, but since this is Rush and it's here, let's see if, if we can do it. Jonathan James likes to power his fan. Um, headphones need power to get sound? No clue. I mean, I have absolutely no idea how the iPhone 7 headphone 
uh, dongles work. This camera seems to be kind of like maladjusted. Let's try to fix it so that, that I don't look headless. Okay. All right, let's move that back up. Let's see what we're gonna deal with then. Microscope. Alrighty. Now the camera, this is gonna be probably really difficult to, to show because the camera, let's see if I can move this image. Let's see. Video capture device. Is there any way I can move it so that it looks more like what I'm seeing? I don't think so. Yeah, because what I'm seeing, when this is straight for me, it's really off center for you guys. Can I tip this at all? Let's see. It would be nice if this would match. All right, so that is center for me. Maybe that's a little bit better. I'm not really sure. Okay, so let's kind of see what we've got going on. Let's get some captain tape and get these connectors out of the way and see if we can at least get this other trace connected. So trace repair sucks. We use the magnet wire. All these pieces like this are just going to be ground so they can just kind of come off and not bother anybody. The top layer ground never hurt anybody. Get the hell out of here. Clean it, clean it up. This, I think, was one of the, the most disturbing words in the English language. Debreed, debreeding a wound, like a burn. The burn center guys having to go debreed the burn victims burns sucks. That would be one of the worst jobs, being the burn debreeder. All right, let's get that other piece out of there that we don't need. Go on. Go on with, with your bad self. All right, so I'm kind of a little bit hesitant to maul up a jumper that I know is working, even though it is a really crappy one. But I will probably have to. Yeah, and I just took it off. All right, so let's kind of straighten this out then. Let's get this shiz out of here. Man, this is just mashed up in here. Debreeding the wound. Good thing this phone is not alive and sentient because that would probably really hurt. I thought it was debride, like, like bride. I don't think so. I could be wrong. Here's something I learned this week that now I get to, it's like one of those things that you wish you could unlearn so who, who knows what's wrong with this? I could say Mark Schaefer's forte is trace repair, but that would be wrong. Mark Schaefer's forte is trace repair. So what's wrong with that? Who knows that? Who, who has walked that road ahead of me? Mark Schaefer's forte. What is wrong with that statement? All right, so we kind of wiggled off the tail end over there. And let's see, we've got to get another one on right next to it. So that means we're gonna to have to push this brother out of the way. Push that out of the way and he's gonna end up over here. All right, so what did he connect to? Yeah, so he needs to end up talking to this guy we got to find the, the other one. we got to dig it up a little bit. Let's dig it up a little bit south of him. So somewhere down here. Here we go. Somewhere around here. All right. So let's, let's try getting our second jumper on. These guys are so close to each other. I don't like fixing them when they're this close to each other. It is super hard to place something in one spot that's so close to another spot without disturbing the first guy. Yes, revive the true is right. The E is silent. So forte is not forte. It is 
fort, which makes you really sound like an idiot. My fort is not trace repair. That just sounds retarded. I can't say that. So now you pretty much have to delete that entire word from your vocabulary. All right. Um, this looks like a burrito from Chipotle. Does it? What kind of burritos are you getting? That is not how they make Chipotle burritos in Rochester. So this is an iPhone 4S vibrator motor, which is the source of uh, a lifetime supply of trace repair wire. It's already pulled off a little piece here. Oh, trace repair. How I hate the trace repair. All right, so that's going to ideally live there if he can straighten himself out without breaking. Can you straighten yourself out without breaking? Let's find out. Let's find out. Can you be a nice little straight piece of wire? I guess so. All right, so I am going to um, tin that mofo. I think I'm just going to tin it right here. I'm going to tin that mofo and make him be straight. There you go, bro. Alrighty. You guys cannot see that at all. There he is. Okay. There you go, buddy. Now you just hang out. And I'm going to decorate you. Turn you nice and shiny. Hey, Jessa, have you or anyone reading this heard of the Mandela effect? Uh, hmm, Mandela effect. Let's guess what that means. Uh, does it mean going to jail uh, because of apartheid? That would be my guess. Other than that, I got nothing. Interesting. Google says it's forte. Oh, I, I don't think Google knows what he's talking about then. It's forte if you are talking about uh, uh, music, like piano and forte, quiet and loud. But if you are talking about someone's strength, it is fort. And it is one of those common things that people don't know about grammar. Mandela effect isn't legit. Well, what is the Mandela effect? Do tell. Do tell. We have no idea what the Mandela effect is. All right, so now that, that guy's tinned. And I'm using the micro pencil. And I'm going to put that phone back there so I really would like to grab a paper towel, which I will try to do without losing this jumper. Stick that back in there. All right. Fort. Yes, fort. This is not my fort. It is, though. There's just too much proof. What is the Mandela effect? I'm not going to go look it up. You guys are going to have to spell it out for me. Spell it out. I've never heard anyone ever say it with a silent E. Right. That doesn't mean that all those people are correct. I've also never heard anyone say it with, uh, with the silent E. Until my friend Hutton, who is a grammar hound, uh, pointed it out. And I looked it up. And she was right. So she was... Uh, unfortunately schooled on that as well, which really means that you can't ever say that thing again. My fort is grammar. Just sounds ridiculous, it's not happening. Fort is articulated forte in both ways. That doesn't make any sense. All right, let's see. Like Chick-fil-A actually having a K not being spelled like chic and white out being spelled wrong. Uh, I sometimes can't tin these wires. All right, let's go on a tangent because now this, you guys are driving me crazy with your, with your being fort unbelievers. Let's type in forte uh, grammar. Let's see. Let's go to the grammarist. How about you guys come along? We'll just take whatever these guys say as 
as true. Maybe, maybe we're wrong. In English, forte is two different words. It comes from the French adjective, meaning strong, blah, blah, blah. Both words are usually pronounced forte in English, while this blah, 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 the word in French is pronounced fort. And in fact, fort is a feminization of the masculine adjective fort, which is pronounced for in French. This doesn't mean careful English speakers should use the French pronunciation, Joe, as that might just confuse people. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. That sounds like it's okay to be wrong as long as you don't confuse anybody. Let's see, what does Grammarly have to say? Uh, can you, no, that's too hard. There we go, grammarerrors.com, common English language errors. The word fort pronounced fort is a French word meaning strength. It's used in English to refer to one's talent or ability. For example, English is my fort. This word is often mispronounced forte because it's confused with the Italian word forte, pronounced forte. The words are spelled the same, but have different pronunciations and meanings. If you play a musical instrument, you will probably recognize the Italian word meaning loud, forte. When referring to ability, the correct pronunciation is fort. But in music, it is always forte. There you go. Not making this shit up. So, now that the grammar lesson is over, let's go back to try to fix this trace. Fort equals flat earth, ha ha. All right, let's build a fort, yes. I mean, it just sounds way too much like fart. I mean, that's, that's the real problem with adopting this uh, new pronunciation. My fort is going to be trace repair just as soon as I get better at it. All right, let's see what happens if I get out the old micro pencil. Let's tin the tip and see how hard it is to put this bitch on here without disturbing the other dude. All right, so let's rotate it around for left-hander function and see if we can get, get that on there where you're supposed to go. All right, don't be a little fort. I don't want this to be the, the fort that I die on here. Touch it, mofo. You know you want to stick on there. Come on. There you go. Needs more flux. All right, that's on there. Great. And let's go down to the southern tier. And let's put a little dab, a little dab will do ya, of flux down there. That is like way too much. We'll have to make it go down there. All right, I'm gonna touch solder to this tip again. Alrighty. Google it. Get Bo's answer. Reject the one you don't like and accept the one you like. In any case, it seems like a word you can say both ways. Eh. I'm a big fan of, of dialect and, and that dialect is important. I've been meaning I would like to get for this stream this really cool book. I think I mentioned it once before. Um, about it was it was really remarkable it was about regional variations in these word choices that you use I think we did talk about this on stream recently like for example when you are parked in a disabled vehicle on the side of the road and you're being passed again and again by giant trucks that are barreling down the interstate what are those giant trucks called? And if you are from Maryland, from the Eastern Shore of Maryland, where I'm from, everybody calls those things tractor trailers, which is the uncommon uh, word for those things. And the rest of the world calls them semi-trucks or big rigs. 
And in some other places, they call them 18 wheelers. So I really want to get this tinned a little bit better before I attempt to make an attachment there. And I really want to see it closer, actually. This is when the 90x magnification really, really shines. All right, here we go. Look how huge that micro pencil is for that. Let's get it better. There, that's a that's shiny enough to make a connection, at least in theory. All right, lay down, mofo. You guys really can't see that all. Let me see if this can get even brighter. There we go. Nice and bright. All right, and I think we are going to have to... I'm going to pronounce it Ford from now on. In memory of Jess's F-250. That's a good idea. Rest in pieces, you piece of shit Ford. It's so funny, I went to the Ram guy today and, and, and it's the, like these guys expect that I'm gonna have some inherent knowledge of trucks just because most people that buy trucks know about trucks. And, and <laughs> he's so funny because I had to go test drive this truck and he's like, you know, so I, you know, my goal is to sell you the truck you really want. I'm like, I don't want a truck at all. I don't have to drive a fucking truck. Driving a truck sucks. I can't drive a truck to the gym. Trying to park a big ass long bed truck at the gym. Hell no. I would rather ride a bike. Like the, the, the last thing I want to do is ever have to drive a truck. And, and the sales guy like does, doesn't even know what to do with that. Like he, he cannot fathom. He's devoted his life to selling trucks. And the idea that someone just doesn't like trucks, that's like, that's like saying, you know, like you're, you're selling Barbies and you're just talking to some dude that's like, I don't really want to play with Barbies at all. I'm just here because I have to have one for, jo for my job. And so he's like, okay. And I'm like, I, I just need to solve a problem. I have work to do. I've got a course coming up. I've got, uh, you know, all these, all these repairs. The last thing I want to do is schlep around here having to deal with this fucking piece of shit camper. I just want it to magic magic wand itself back home and uh, so to make me a happy customer you can solve my problem and and he's he's like well you know if you want me to show you some Fords like why would the why would I ever want to buy a Ford again I mean I get it everybody likes Fords but not me fuck Ford that's what I have to say piece of shit car wish I'd never met Ford Alrighty. I have an F-150. I hate driving cars. I don't get it. You shot him in the balls. I guess so. Uh, so then he's like, you know how they all are, where, where the, like the, the moment that the, that the guy, when you're doing some kind of an auto transaction, uses the word MSRP, just leave. You know, where it's like, come on, man. This, you know what sucks about your business? Here's what sucks. If I, if I were to go to McDonald's, I can't go into McDonald's and say, yes, uh, what, I see that you want to sell a quarter pounder for a uh, $1.59 or whatever it is. Uh, let me see your invoice price on that. Okay, so it looks like you sourced the beef from this, you know, horrible uh, migrant worker farm <coughs> and you, you know, paid X per ton of that shit. And, and then it looks like you're getting your lettuce shipped in from California and, and I'll come up with a price on that. All right. It looks like your actual parts cost on making this burger was, uh, about 16 cents. And then you've got your labor insurance overhead and room for a profit. So I'm going to offer you I'm gonna offer you a dollar twenty-nine for that for that hamburger because I can look up on the internet and and figure out what is the exact your exact cost and culture says that I'm allowed to to just 
say no i'm not going to buy it for what what you want what you you'd like me to pay for it i'm going to make you a i'm going to negotiate the the price of what you're selling you know no no other industries like that nobody comes into a cell phone repair shop and says yeah okay so it looks like you are sourcing your screens for uh you know whatever and i feel like they should you know, with uh, my estimate of what you're making on these, I think they should be, you know, 99 bucks instead of one, 119. So I'm going to make you an offer for, for 119. All right, let's see what happened with that. I'm not super confident, but let's give it a shot. Um, so, the, I mean, car, car buying sucks for those guys. It's like no other industry can you go in there and go, I looked up on the internet, your cost is just splattered everywhere. And it used to be that people didn't know what dealer holdback meant and nobody knew what factory to dealer incentives were, but we know all of that now. So we can tell you uh, pretty much how much you paid for that and how much you're making. So we're just gonna uh, decide what your salary should be and, and make you a deal. So that sucks for those guys, feel bad for them. But that's just the way it is. All right, let's see, since I ripped up our backlight jumper, if we still have backlight or no. Yay, I still have backlight, so that's good. Now let's see if we have the ability to flip this image. And then if so, we'll clean this up, get some green oil, UV curable paste, and be done with that. Get a Porsche, or is it Porsche? I have no idea. Um, time to use some of that money let's okay let's talk about that um why is it this is what i really want to know what what is it about lewis rossman that makes you guys just believe everything that he says that's what i want to know has it ever occurred to anyone that he he clearly thinks it's funny to troll me and to play jokes ha it doesn't occur to anybody that this this whole perception that he has generated is is a big fucking joke like that doesn't I, I i cannot understand how that occurs to like nobody that's just like oh yeah let's just make fun of jessa and her water tower of money what that's that's crazy all right so let's see especially because you know let it be known lewis rossman with his hole in the floor and his folding chair is a total cheapskate but he does make more money than i do and uh, we've we've established this many times okay let's see what happens if we flip it do you flip no you don't flip well i'm pretty sure your flipping trace is good what else could we do to test let's see if we can test compass this thing you, does anybody even use compass Yes, please allow you to locate my uh, my location. Hmm. Compass. I would think compass would move around. It doesn't seem to be moving around. All right, maybe we should look back at that compass trace, even though that really isn't part of the deal with this repair. But let's see if we can help him out. If it's not too hard, let's see if we can see if that trace is grounded, because it did kind of have a big fat blob on it. All right, let's see. McDonald's equals cancer. Yes, it does in many, many ways. Cancer on society. I am super excited. We joined the local biz for the, um, the local CSA. Everybody should do that, I think. Go find who in your town is a farmer that is doing a CSA. So we joined one that sounds really, really amazing. And it's going to start up in two weeks. All right, so let's investigate that particular end here. That is potentially touching that guy. Yeah, you're too big of a blob. All right, let's edit this. Let's give it one more try. 
let's see. I actually think their coffee is okay. Yeah, but I don't know about that. I don't think I've ever gone to McDonald's and ordered a McDonald's coffee, ever. They had that sort of a big thing where, oops, I need to get my captain tape back on here where they had the big marketing thing about how cool the McDonald's coffee is. But I don't know, it just seems like it would be uh, Sanka. <laughs> is that what it's called? The old school, old people coffee everybody used to, everybody's grandparents used to drink? Have a cup of Sanka. All right, mofo. Can you please just talk to the guy you're supposed to talk to? And nobody else? All right, that looks good. Okay, let's see if that made a damn bit of difference. Best thing you can do at a dealership is to say no and walk out the door. I don't think so. I think there's nothing easier than buying a new car. I was just uh, giving Mark, I get, here's my advice on buying a used car. So Mark, let's get rid of this. Mark just bought a minivan and he was asking me about buying cars. I actually like it. I think it's super fun to go to go negotiate a deal. So my advice for him, what's your, I'd like to know what's your advice. Who's a, who used to sell cars around here? If you want to get a good deal on a car that's a used car, then you're missing some of that information that you have when you're buying a new car. So if you are buying a used car, here's what I told them to do. Number one, you need to identify the value that they paid for the car because that's how, that's how you do in this biz. So you take the car that you want to buy and you call up a bunch of other dealer dealerships and you say, I'm planning to sell my car, this car, and I know you can't tell me exactly, but can you give me a rough estimate of about what you would offer me? for a trade-in and describe its condition, et cetera. Of course, you'd have to see it, but I just kind of want to do a little, a little planning before we really get into the, the car buying thing and get some quotes on what local dealers in your area would quote you as an estimate for what they might buy, give you for a trade on, your, on the vehicle that you actually want to buy. So then you'll kind of have an idea of a range of what the dealership paid for that car. And then you can add in what you think is an estimate of their cost to bring it up to uh, showroom condition and your estimate of their cost of doing business and their profit margin that they need. So that you can kind of come up with a figure that you would like to pay for the car based on that. Next, you have to absolutely work up a plan B deal. So you need to either go identify another similar car or just make one up you know my neighbor is selling this insert similar car here all right let's see you don't go sideways mofo i'm really sure that that trace is okay now pretty sure how about you compass so you got to work up that second deal and then yeah this guy might be screwed on compass well, good thing you're not here for compass repair, bro, because your backlight problem is solved. I will look at it one more time to see if I can see a reason why you don't have compass. That, you know, this could be third layer damage to other compass -y traces that are probably multiple traces are gonna go under there. So we are definitely not for the love of compass going to dig down under this layer and see what kind of third layer damage there would be. We would be really, really out on a limb for a minor function. So you work up your second deal by making one up. Let's say my neighbor, Bob, he's a retired guy. He's about to, you know, move into the nursing home and he has a insert similar deal here, his car. I'd really rather buy the car you're selling, but he's really gonna give me a good deal and then tell them the price that your, your made up neighbor is gonna sell you that car for that is, would be a really good value, but it's really not the car. It doesn't have some major feature 
that you want. So you're hoping that this dealership will be able to give you a deal you can feel really good about turning that guy down, but if they can't, you're just gonna have to go with that car. That was my advice. And then you go in there and, and then see what they offer you for a price on the car that you wanna buy. And if the car, you have to kind of let them go first. And if they quote you anything that's close to what you kind of had them pegged on, then say, you know, no negotiation is necessary. Great. Uh, there's no, no need to be an asshole. And uh, take the deal and, and be done. If they quote you something that is, you know, kind of within range, then you can suggest a counter offer that would be what you want to pay and then they'll either take it or leave it alrighty okay mm -hmm. when I got my Ford the check engine light came on the next day fantastic it, everyone loves for nothing built like a Ford what is the little slogan slogan for Ford's Ford tough Ford tough to crack the reputation that it's a shit piece of shit car. All right, are you touching ground? Let's find out. Let's have the Mr. Multimeter find out if the end of that trace is somehow touching ground. Would a software update help get Compass back? I don't see how, so you can't solve soft hardware problems with software solutions. So I doubt that. I would doubt that. When you when you have, you know, hey, a trace for compass was definitely torn, then, you know, the idea that this being a software problem is incredibly low. All right, so he's not ground. Which tells me that the reason why compass, for one, Compass itself was not even part of that line. When we researched the line, remember that line was for accelerometer and gyroscope, not Compass. Compass was a completely different IC. It's just on the same page. So if Compass is not working, even though we, we I mean, this is a good connection. That's definitely, that's definitely good. That's definitely, definitely good. Yeah, there's really nothing wrong with that. Let's see. Where'd you go, hole? I guess that reset line could be touching it. Yeah, it's still a little blobby. All right, let's edit that one more time and then we'll be done. Whatever it is. I'm actually interested if compass itself has anything to do with that line because it was not on the compass I see, but. All right, let's try to get this sucker Off of that. So we took backlight off and we're going to stick it back on. And we're going to try to do it in a way that doesn't bother the other guy at all. All right, so now he's way over there. So that definitely is not going to be bothering him. And then let's get this dude to get back over a notch. No, don't come all the way off, you piece of shit. Lay down. Settle down. All right, fine. All right. That. Let's inspect. Yeah, you guys are not talking to each other. You, actually, backlight might be in ground. Now, let's see. I think it probably is. Let's find out. That really looks like backlight is touching ground. Let's find out. Mr. Multimeter, 
what do you have to say about LCM reset touching ground? Is he ground now? Yes or no? So we got a probe on ground. Yes, he is ground. Yep. That is mighty tough to get him off the ground. So now we've lost our backlight repair that we've had going good three times just for the love of fucking compass. And that's going to be super hard to do now. All right, get off there, piece of shit. All right, let's take you up the road a little bit here. Can you make friends with your trace here? Get off entirely. Move out of the way. Move over. And let's stick you here. There you go. Good boy. All right. Now you guys are no longer even neighbors. So let's get your little tail wagged out of here. Wag your tail, come on. Break the tail without breaking this whole trace. I know it's hard. I know I should use an exacto. There you go, buddy. All right, last try. Let's see if that made any difference. And if not, as long as we have back late, we are gonna say, we gave you the old college try to help you out with your other fuckery, but that is not part of this deal. And we need to requote you if you want us to drill down on that anymore, because that is gonna be Massive third layer damage. All right, move over, mod. Okay. I guess they are cheap, so they are affordable. Yay, backlight's still working, and let's see what happens. Uh, how much for the iPhone 6S Plus battery replacement? You can fill out a quote request on the website. All right. Trace looks damaged. You might, you might head to extend it for a backlight. No, I don't know about that. All right. Let's see what's up with screen rotation. Rotate. Can you rotate? No, no, you can't. Boo. And let's look at compass. Anything going on in compass? Nope. Let's look back at the schematic and see if that line is involved in compass at all or not. Let's see. Rehot CPU, that'll fix it. Sure. Wage gap is Lewis play on the difference in pay for equal work, male and female, in USA. He is saying that Jessa is the reverse. No, he's not. This is m more of his trolling. He has started using the word wage gap to refer to me because he made a, a, a deal with Repair Shopper for sponsorship, which by the way, everybody click the Jessa link for Repair Shopper in the description below. So he called up, uh, he called up Repair Shopper, which we both love and, and use and he made a sponsorship deal. So he made a sponsorship deal that was based on getting X number of signups per month and to get paid Y amount. And then I made my deal with them, who I had already been sponsoring them for a free t-shirt, talk about wage gap. So I said, uh, hey, how about we stop doing free sponsorship for your t-shirts and we will we'll negotiate our own deal. So, and we had talked about this a long time. So I negotiated my own deal. So my deal was to have less signups for less money. And the ratio of Lewis's deal is like crazy. Like he'll never be able to actually make what he said. 
um, where mine was super reasonable. Like for me, I'm trying to get one sign up, which I think is very reasonable. I think Repair Shopper is great, and I think that people should uh, should definitely give it a try, especially with all the reporting, which I've now really, really gotten into this year as we've had more employees to be able just at a glance to see what each employee is generating for the business is fantastic to be able to see how many fidget spinners have we sold like that's and, and how what percent of the bottom line like those reports are so easy and they're just they're done it's amazing so i absolutely recommend repair shopper and have have loved using it and and troy is super responsive and he'll fix things and he's really really plugged in and tuned in so love those guys so uh so lewis was pissed that my deal with them was um was to to do the same job well it's not the same job but to do sponsorship for less money so he started calling me wage gap when i think that um his his deal is just nuts it was a bad bad deal so he was pissed so that's when he started this whole wage gap thing so he is not saying that jessa makes more money than him he is saying that jessa like all females was dumb enough to do the same work for less and that pissed him off Alrighty, let's maybe accelerometer IC is burnt. All right, so we're going to finish this up just by looking back at that actual accelerometer trace, which is completely not even part of this repair since it is here for backlight. But let's go head over to ZXW and remind ourselves what that looked like. Compass equals fidget spinner, now broken. Yes, exactly. All right, so let's do this. All right, um, screw holes break. Screw holes break. Screw holes break. All right, so here was the line that we are, that we, I mean, I'm 100% sure that this jumper is fine. There we go, and let's figure out where does it go. And so it goes to this neighbor chip on the second pad. So let's click over here to the board view for the seven plus. And yeah, Greg asks, is rotation locked? You know what, Greg, when I first looked at this phone, it was locked. And that was the first thing that I thought of as well, which kind of makes me think this guy is gonna see this as an upgrade <laughs> because he doesn't like screen rotation, um, but no. Uh, okay. so. This particular trace then is SP, there it is, click it, SPI, AOP to IMU, clock R2. All right, so we're going to just copy that then, and we'll go over to Blackfish and ask about it. So let's ask about that. So we're going to just paste that and see if Blackfish can find it. All right, so it's this line here, and where does that go? It looks like this is plugging in to Cayman, which is going to likely be the CPU. Pretty sure that's the CPU. Yes. Or one of them. System on a chip. AOP. All right. So it is plugging in with this other one. Okay. So this one is probably the one that goes to Compass. So they probably are related. But plugging in and telling and it's the, the clock signal that is going to be used to time input, communication input on likely these other lines here. So where, where do these lines go? So if you've got a fucked up clock, then that's gonna fuck everything on both of those lines. So now we could kind of uh, pick one of these. Well, let's just see where else this goes. Yeah, so here it is at the U2404. And this is in the carbon section, accelerometer and gyroscope. And now the compass function over here is magnesium compass. But let's look at what's coming out of compass and we see these same lines that are gonna be uh, data lines. And here's that other clock line R1 that ties together with R2. So, hmm, I wonder, what leaving it just 
I, I mean, I think that probably what's going on here, if this trace is in fact repaired, if you if you just look at all of these lines that are that are coming out of that chip, and you look back at this chip and its location, so these this is a bunch this is a bunch of uh, lines that are going to have to talk to the CPU. So if you look at the path from this chip to the CPU, it's hard for it to not go through here. So even though we have information, we have clear information, ah, no, um, about these three lines that happen to be in the top layer under that screw bracket, one, two, three, there's gonna be other lines that are deeper down. And if you look back at our actual damage, oh, now I gotta open this up. It was really, really severe, like really severe. So there's a, a chunk that is taken out here. So let's look back at our spot, clean it up and see what we're really looking at. Where are you, spot? Where are you? Where are you, screw hole? You know, like, see how, see how this edge here where there's ground, like, that is all really, see how this whole section of the board here is loose. Like, whatever goes through this, probably thermal microvia, but maybe it's, maybe it's not. Like, this is so spongy. So, my guess is that despite, I'm, I'm pretty confident in that that jumper yeah that's definitely good that's definitely fine all right so my read on this is that this is a case of third layer damage that's going to affect other lines deeper within there and if you wanted to fix it you'd have to take all this off and know that you've got those three lines there and then you'd have to just fillet down until you could see what was broken deeper down. And then you'd have to research it because then you have no support from something like ZXW. So you'd have to get a bare board, scrape down to that third layer and start mapping out where do these go, figure out who needs to talk to who. Talk to who, you've got to build third layer jumpers. Then you would have to um, tightrope your, your first layer jumpers over that, fill the whole thing with epoxy and get it solved. And that's a lot of what we do for six long screw damage and Mark does more six long screw damage than anybody and he often has to repair cracked vias that are in the third layer and you know it's a it's a real big real big headache um, for him since he sees it so much it's a really common fault he knows all, all the third layer just kind of by heart from having to figure it out and I think if the iPhone 7 plus if this was a sort of relatively common thing as time goes on then I think it would probably be worth it to go that sort of extra step to investigate the third layer so that you could solve deeper problems. But for this guy, uh, he, he really wants this phone back and it is here for backlight. So we are done with backlight. So uh, let's see, aircraft, what? So much dedication to spend this much time on rotation. Not really, because we're giving up. <laughs> All right, oh my, blood, sweat, tears. All right, so what I'm gonna do with this is um, I am going to clean it up and get, get the flux out of there and then we're gonna green oil UV, UV cover it and cure it so that none of these guys can talk to anybody else and then we'll stick that mod back on there for him. Yeah, those that's beautiful jumper. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can see that third layer down there already. Kind of want to know while we're here if those are just ground uh, thermal vias right there. I think I'll measure that real quick. Are those dudes just ground? Let's find out. 
because it is easy to do that. We will stick a probe on ground. Are you ground? Yep. Are you ground? Are you sure you're not touching anything else? Oh, you're not ground? Seriously? What the hell are you, bro? That's a big thing to not be ground. Are you just ground that's separated from your via? That's all frayed up over there. Let's make sure we're not going to get into trouble here. Let's look. Yeah, you're definitely ground. You're just all chopped up. You're just all chopped up. Let's just make sure you're not touching anything you're not supposed to that we could help with. Otherwise, that's going to be all we can do for this guy. Don't touch anybody underneath you that you're not supposed to. You are all mashed up. Okay. Alrighty, where is the green oil? Let's go find it. And then we will wrap this up and get the hell out of here. Where is the green oil? All right, so we are using this stuff, which is by far and away better than anything else. Now available on the iPad Rehab Supply Store, as well as all over China and pretty much everywhere now. We've been using it for about a year. And it is far, far, far better to use the UV curable stuff than the old school, boo, lame, very plasticky uh, conformal coating that we used to use. We'll just squirt some out, and it's very much like nail polish. All right, so we're going to squirt some. I just squirt it out on a post-it note, and it really does kind of have that nail polishy consistency. And then we'll grab any old um, tweezer tip, the jankiest tweezer tip around move guys out of the way and then we're just going to kind of let that float all over the wound and make a big old very natural scab so it will flow under and around these wires there we go it cures best if it's in a relatively you know kind of thin layer and once that cures, we'll be able to put that back on together. All right, so I'm gonna pop this over into a little UV nail salon thingy for this to burn up. And we'll catch up on chat and be done. Yay. What are you guys building? Aircraft stuff? Weather radar? What? Uh, no fix, bro. That's right. A drone killer? 98, 99 people watching and only 28 likes. Yes, and I'm sure a couple of downvotes. We always get the the downvotes. Down the rabbit hole. Nope. 29 likes. Awesome. 
32 likes, wow. iPad rehab, so you're not discounting him because it was just in for backlight? Discounting him for solving his problem? No. So here's the deal with that. This guy sent a, A, this guy fucked his phone himself by shoving the wrong screw in the wrong hole. So if he had wanted to send his phone in to have the backlight mod installed, we would have done that professionally, you know, no problem with that. Um, so he, he, he wrecked his phone. He sent it for a solution. So the solution pricing and billing model that we use works like this. So you and I are gonna make a deal where you're gonna send me a phone that has some problem. And I don't know exactly what that problem is. So you're going to, um, Send me the phone and I'm my end of the deal is that I guarantee that you will get the problem that you sent it in for solved. And if I can't solve that problem, if I couldn't bring back backlight on this, no matter how much time I, I spent on it, no matter how many traces and jumpers I ran and, and hours and hours I might spend, I might spend an entire weekend on one like data recovery. Regardless of all that, if I can't meet my end of the deal, you pay nothing so you so there's there's never going to be a time where you are going to have to pay me for my time or you know pay me just to look at it or anything like that um, and so that means i'm accepting risk that i might not be able to solve the problem at all in which case i'll i'll be donating all this time for free and that's gonna that and that would suck so I'm only gonna take problems that I think are solvable. So we don't offer a solution for every problem. Um, your end of the risk is you are not gonna have to pay me at all if I can't solve your primary problem. But I'm not offering a bumper to bumper warranty on your entire device. So when a, when a device comes in, there's no way for me to know in advance if you are going to have secondary issues that are that are that are not the primary problem most phones don't you know most phones that have a backlight issue it's a backlight line failure you solve the backlight and everything else is fine but if you have like underlying touch disease or a baseband issue or something else from a drop it's your it's on your end of the risk of whether or not you have secondary issues and this is going to be in your phone that you're sending in so we both share risk i am risking that if i can't fix your phone for the solution i'm not i'm not going to charge you anything any and i might donate a lot of time to that your end of the risk is that if you send me a phone and i do fix that prob problem in which case it's a successful repair if there are secondary issues in the phone that risk is on you now with this guy i will tell him hey this is what we found you know, you have, uh, you know, this, this, this backlight problem, which we fixed. And as a courtesy, since I was in the area, I donated time to try to, to saw, I, I fixed another trace just for free, just as a courtesy, just to be nice, just to give you the best chance at having a fully functional phone. While I was in the area, it wasn't that big of a deal for me to research and run another jumper for a completely unrelated line to backlight. That was all a free gift. However, we're, we're letting you know that and we, we didn't have to test gyroscope function at all. You know, it was completely unrelated to backlight. However, I'm letting you know that while here, we noticed that you seem to have uh, some, some compass gyroscope accelerometer problems. So if you're a heavy user of those apps, you know, that, that might be something that you want to to you know, kind of, hey, let's talk about fixing that problem as a separate repair. In which case, it would be a huge repair to kind of go back in and really try to, to drill that out. Uh, so so that, that would be the deal. So solutions-based billing does, is for the primary problem solution. I make no guarantee that your phone won't have secondary issues that's completely separate from the primary problem. So you're not discounting him because it was just in for backlight. I'm definitely not discounting him. In fact, I am giving him a lot of thought and investigation that he probably wouldn't get anywhere else for free. Let's see. Um, discount for what she fixed it for the issue it arrived for? That's right. Show off the Apple Light logo mod when finished. Yeah, I kind of want to do that. I got all over me last time. 
I don't know, Chris Long. I'm used to customers bitching for the whole thing not working. Well, then you should state your policy more clearly. They should have said it was an issue before quote then. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty standard practice that, especially if a phone comes in with no backlight, you have no way to know up front if it has secondary issues. So they really can't make the case, oh, that was working fine. No, you know, because you, you have no backlight. So, it, you know, and, and this is really clear. This is going to be uh, third layer trace damage to you had massive massive hole in your board and we fixed the the top layer to bring back backlight it really shouldn't be a surprise that you have ripped up shit that's going um, elsewhere under the board looks like slime heal that wound yes can you use nail polish if you can't find that no just use that stuff nail polish is difficult to remove do you have clean flux from board before applying? Yes. Making a clean surface. Yes. So, so we, we just cleaned that all off with alcohol. Now they are climbing because you said something. Hmm. Maybe I'm crazy. I'd still give $25 off. Fuck that. Hell no. I mean, that's insane. Why would you? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. The, the, that if someone that was a stranger just walked up to you and said, hey, give me 25 bucks. Oh, sure, man. You know, like, no. Why, why would someone who, who, who refused to go to a professional to begin with, who caused massive DIY damage to their really expensive phone, who does DIY work on a 7 Plus? That's, a, that's like an $800 phone that they just willy-nilly ripped into it with a big-ass screw and just ripped it straight down so that it tore a hole in the board. That guy. You know, so then he says, hey, can you fix my backlight? Now I have given him a path to data recovery. He can plug in this phone. He can, he can, you know, it has value. It can still make calls. It can do all kinds of things, but he can't. Uh, and he had the screen lock on to begin with. So uh, it, it can't rotate the screen. That is not my problem. That is his problem for fucking his board. All right, I'd test it just like Jessa. Try to make it work. If not, sorry, fix the issue they sent it in for. That's exactly right. It's like a mechanic changing your tires when it came in for a brake job. That's exactly right. That's like saying, hey, my Ford F1, and my Ford F250 turbo diesel has, um, I need to get the tires rotated. Is that a service that you offer? And then for them to discount me on my tire rotation because they realize that the fucking engine doesn't work. No, they're not going to do that. That's insane. All right, that's a great policy for the customer. So you'd still charge him if the backlight was working, but it doesn't boot. Uh, it would, it would, how could I, how could I demonstrate that backlight's working if it doesn't boot? If it doesn't boot, then it doesn't, then it doesn't boot. It does, then backlight doesn't work. So if a phone comes in booting with no backlight and it goes back out not booting, still doesn't have backlight. There is no way to have backlight working on a phone that doesn't, that doesn't boot. And you also, you know, kind of can't be an asshole. If I had done something, like let's say I was fixing a backlight problem and I used too much heat on the board and let's say I damaged um, a connector for camera. I'm not going to hand it back to him and say, backlight's working, pay the bill. Oh, by the way, your camera doesn't work because I caused that damage. So you have to be responsible and professional. But the only point is that I am not accepting risk or offering a bumper to bumper warranty on your used phone that you broke, that, that I can't at the onset of the repair even test all of the functions. So my inability to for, for you to demonstrate to me that your, uh, that your compass is working before I lay hands on it uh, then, then your compass problem is a separate issue from your, your primary problem, which in this case is backlight. Thumbs up iPad rehab. Completely different. You went from no compass to no boot. I hate it when they say it was working before. Well, it, they need to demonstrate that it was working before. Otherwise, your disclaimer, should, you know, they have, to, they have to sign and accept that your phone is not working, so no functions can be tested. We cannot offer you any kind of guarantee or warranty service on any of that. I don't know, at least in my model, I would only feel good giving back a fully functional phone with a flat rate. 
then everyone should go to you because that does not make business sense. You can't, um, you, you really can't in a used phone market, you, you, know, you can't offer a bumper to bumper warranty on every aspect of a phone. For a phone, you don't know the history that you can't even test. You have no idea. That means if you were gonna do a, a screen repair and let's say you're gonna make 40 bucks doing a screen repair, and then you find out that it needs a TriStar job, that you're going to do a $100 TriStar job in order to make the 40 bucks, that doesn't make sense. And that's not really standard in any repair business. All right. Um, everyone has a different model. I don't do extra work and then give a de discount if it's not successful. Neither do I. They didn't pay for that service. They paid for no backlight. Yeah. If they had sent it in as uh, this has no backlight and it has a compass problem, I would have declined the repair to begin with. I would not have accepted a repair and put time into it because I, that would not have been um, something that I expected to be able to solve. Why is long screw damage even a thing? Can they just not put traces there or have some kind of a solid panel? Well, it's not in their interest. Why would, if you were a designer, your, your mental motivation, if you worked for Apple in design, would be what is the, you know, I'm an engineer and I think like an engineer and I like everything to be very black and white and just so, what is the path for future repair of this device? The path is the customer goes to the Apple store where we will take the device and sell them a, an, a refurbished one. And then that device will go back to the Apple mothership where people will follow very detailed instructions using 70 different screwdrivers to disassemble this phone. They're, they aren't going to design for the ability to support people opening up. They don't think people should ever even open their phone. So they're not gonna design with DIY repair in mind. So that if you are trying to be really compact and design a board, you have to have you know clearances between different traces and ground layers and who can talk to who and how, who gets routed where, you're certainly not going to say, let's complicate the design by making it friendly to an idiot that's doing a DIY repair that mixes up the screws. That, that wouldn't be a reasonable thing to ask the designers to think about. I don't have a business model, but if I did, I would offer to do the extra work for a reduced fee or even free. Not me. I mean, I, would, I, wouldn't, I really wouldn't do that. Even if he said, oh, I really need Compass to work, I would say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Because that, that level of work right now, that would be, I mean, if, the, if you think about, what would it take to investigate for the first time ever third layer trace damage in an iPhone 7 Plus? The likelihood is high that just through investigation, clearing off all the work that we did, drilling down a whole layer of the board, you have no idea what traces are under there. You are going to have to research each one with a multimeter on a bare board. You would have to rebuild each of those and then rebuild the, the first layer on top of those. That is an extraordinary amount of work by itself. And, your own, and your, the, what you're going to solve is compass, which is a really minor function of the phone that most people don't really care about. That is an, an extraordinary amount of time. You have the risk that you may not be able to actually make the connections or figure out who's supposed to talk to who. And you have the additional risk that debriding down another layer could actually make the phone not boot? What if there's some I2C line that needs to be there that in your excavation now you damage? So now the phone doesn't boot at all. And what you had was a phone that they can at least get a backup off of. They can at least have uh, some use of. You know, that phone could, could sit there and be an MP3 player for their house. You know, they could take it and be, you know, be something that they use on the boat. You know, like that phone is, is working and has enough function to have significant value. If you were to try to do this investigative third layer trace repair, you have a really high risk that you may make that phone actually not boot. I'm not willing to take that risk. So I would decline that repair. So there, there is no, I was already nice. If it was uh, something that I could address within this repair, I would have done it for free with no, no additional charge. Um, but not, I'm not gonna take a huge risk and do a massive repair 
for something like a compass problem, no way. Drill your own headphone jack. Repair does not mean a refurbished phone with all functions working like new. That's not rational. I agree. He should give Jess a $25 for troubleshooting. Nope. I mean, I'm not going to ask him. That was a, a donation as well. Use assistive touch for rotating screen. Exactly. Plus the fact that the guy had the screen locked to begin with. Uh, so this is an upgrade for him. He doesn't have to worry about locking and unlocking. All right. Um, let's see. Listening to breathe reminds me of stuffed pig. Oh, Paul Daniels, you can't read comments and take them personally. My Ford F-250 has long screen damage from wrong studs being put into the engine block. Yeah, that's what mine feels like. All right. Reading comment remind me of Dick. Ha! That's hilarious. That is pretty funny. I meant more like boot looping. Well, boot looping is your problem. That means you did something to corrupt the software. So you need to, you need to fix that. All right. Jessa, go to sleep. Bumper to bumper. I don't know who Doug DeMuro is. I'm an auto mechanic. 75% of first time customers through our dual door pool that the 75 percent of first time customers through our door pull the it was working before crap even if all we did was an oil change they're just trying to get free shit all right give them a multi-tool with a built-in compass <laughs> all right uh Short to ground. All right, let's um, let's see what this if this thing is done. That kind of turned off. Let's show you guys what the cool backlight mod looks like, and then we will call it a day on this. Let's see if I can get his mod screwed in without without wrecking everything up. How do I know that his mod didn't destroy? compass function by interfering with that. Who knows? All right. Let's see if I can get that ridiculous battery thing back in here. So let's see. Let's make this mod great again. I really just want to solder this in here for him. This is ridiculous. So ridiculous. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. But clever, I have to give him that. Very clever. It doesn't stay in there very well at all. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to see more of this because it is kind of a, a real pain to get that battery kick. Cool, look at his mod! Wow! It's probably too hard to see with all these lights. Look at all the pretty colors! And now featuring backlight! Cool! It's hard to see the colors on the side. So that's the backlight mod. Kind of a cool mod. I don't know that you can ever... I don't know that it ever stops. I don't know that it ever that it ever turns off because it just seems to be you know on the battery and then this guy has it has it set up to to do all that flashing stuff so there we go that would get real annoying at night does it does it go off when you turn off the screen no it is always on yeah i would probably mod that mod to not do it all the time 
All right. Oh, now I'm super tired. Fancy stickers on the back. Hmm. Okay. Um, and that is going to be it for us. I'm going to put this back together, and we have solved our first case of iPhone 7 Plus long screw damage taking out backlight. Be careful with those mods, and if you want, and mods are cool. Have a professional. Anybody can do this. Go to go to your local mall, guys. Go to somebody that has some experience that can at least like solder these mods in for you. Just the the when you're doing ones that are attached with stickers and stuff like that, eh, you know they're they're those are really dangerous. Um, so so have somebody um, put put one in for you that can that can solder it and cover it up with insulation and 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 know what you're actually getting. Alrighty. I will see you guys next time. Touch the Apple logo to turn it off. Wait, really? Mm, whoa! That's pretty cool. All right, I take it back. It is cool. No, how do you turn it back on? How do you turn it back on? Tell me. Try pushing or interacting with Apple logo to turn it off. That's pretty cool. So it's got something like under the battery. Oh, you can like change it up. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Clever. Ooh, I like that one. The, the, just the, it's like the Christmas tree with the slow glow. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I would do it. Okay, see you guys next time.